planets orbit the Sun in a counterclockwise direction as viewed from above the Sun's North Pole. And the planet's orbits all are aligned to what astronomers call the ecliptic plane. The story of our greater understanding of planetary motion could not be told if it were not for the work of a German mathematician named Johannes Kepler. Kepler lived in Graz, Austria during the tumultuous early 17th century. Due to religious and political difficulties common during that era, Kepler was banished from Graz on August 2, 1600. Fortunately, an opportunity to work as an assistant for the famous astronomer Tycho Brahe presented itself and the young Kepler moved his family from Graz, 300 miles across the Danube River, to Brahe's home in Prague. Tycho Brahe is credited with the most accurate astronomical observations of his time and was impressed with the studies of Kepler during an earlier meeting. However, Brahe mistrusted Kepler, fearing that his bright young intern might eclipse him as the premier astronomer of his day. He therefore let Kepler see only part of his voluminous planetary data. He set Kepler the task of understanding the orbit of the planet Mars, the movement of which fit problematically into the universes described by Aristotle and Ptolemy. It is believed that part of the motivation for giving the Mars problem to Kepler was Brahe's hope that its difficulty would occupy Kepler while Brahe worked to perfect his own theory of the solar system, which was based on a geocentric model where the Earth is the center of the solar system. Based on this model, the planets Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all orbit the Sun, which in turn orbits the Earth. As it turned out, Kepler, unlike Brahe, believed firmly in the Copernican model of the solar system known as heliocentric, which correctly placed the Sun at its center. But the reason Mars' orbit was problematic was because the Copernican system incorrectly assumed the orbits of the planets to be circular. After much struggling, Kepler was forced to an eventual realization that the orbits of the planets are not circles, but were instead the elongated or flattened circles that geometers call ellipses. And, the particular difficulties Brahe had with the movement of Mars were due to the fact that its orbit was the most elliptical of the planets for which Brahe had extensive data. Thus, in a twist of irony, Brahe unwittingly gave Kepler the very part of his data that would enable Kepler to formulate the correct theory of the solar system, banishing Brahe's own theory. Since the orbits of the planets are ellipses, let us review three basic properties of ellipses. The first property of an ellipse. An ellipse is defined by two points, each called a focus, and together called foci. The sum of the distances to the foci from any point on the ellipse is always a constant. The second property of an ellipse. The amount of flattening of the ellipse is called the eccentricity. The flatter the ellipse, the more eccentric it is. Each ellipse has an eccentricity with a value between zero, a circle, and one essentially a flat line, technically called a parabola. The third property of an ellipse. The longest axis of the ellipse is called the major axis, while the shortest axis is called the minor axis. Half of the major axis is termed a semi-major axis. Knowing then that the orbits of the planets are elliptical, Johannes Kepler formulated three laws of planetary motion which accurately describe the motion of comets as well. Kepler's first law. Each planet's orbit about the Sun is an ellipse. The Sun's center is always located at one focus of the orbital ellipse. The Sun is at one focus. The planet follows the ellipse in its orbit, meaning that the planet to Sun distance is constantly changing as the planet goes around its orbit. Kepler's second law, the imaginary line joining a planet and the Sun sweeps equal areas of space during equal time intervals as the planet orbits. Basically, that planets do not move with constant speed along their orbits, rather their speed varies, so that the line joining the centers of the Sun and a planet sweeps out equal parts of an area in equal times. The point of nearest approach of the planet to the Sun is termed perihelion, the point of greatest separation is aphelion. Hence, by Kepler's second law, a planet is moving fastest when it is at perihelion and slowest at aphelion. Kepler's third law. 
The squares of the orbital periods of the planets are directly proportional to the cubes of the semi-major axes of their orbits. Kepler's third law implies that the period for a planet to orbit the Sun increases rapidly with the radius of its orbit. Thus, we find that Mercury, the innermost planet, takes only 88 days to orbit the Sun, the Earth takes 365 days, while Saturn requires 10,759 days to do the same. Though Kepler hadn't known about gravitation when he came up with his three laws, they were instrumental in Isaac Newton deriving his theory of universal gravitation which explains the unknown force behind Kepler's third law. Kepler and his theories were crucial in the better understanding of our solar system dynamics and is a springboard to newer theories that more accurately approximate our planetary orbits.